Hi there, Joanna. Thank you so much for being on the show. I've been looking forward to this for a while. So I'd like to start off by having you introduce yourself to our audience and tell us a little bit about your background. Yes. Hey, Dolly. Thank you so much for inviting me to your show. My name is Joanna. I'm the creator and founder of Savvy Chic Design. I'm your graphic branding and web designer. So I help entrepreneurs and small businesses turn their vision into visual creation. So that's one of the key things that I served. Um, I serve my audience as well when it comes to um, the things that I do. Um, I am I am a wife. I'm a stepmom. I'm actually based here in Kentucky originally from the Philippines so if there's anyone watching mabuhay kamusta I think one of the things that I would like to say and I'm a passionate learner and any a loved anything that has to do with um with visuals mm, I love that I think that that's part of the reason why you and I connected immediately because I love learning too and I feel like you have a similar story. We both came from a different country and we've adapted and we've created a business and it's really nice to connect in that way. So tell me a little bit, um, how old were you when you came to the U.S.? Oh, I, I'm, I've, been, uh, I've been here in the U.S. my adult life. I basically came here because I found the love of my life. Every time like someone actually <laughs> asks me, I always tell them, I've cross mountain and sea to be with my husband Literally. <laughs> <laughs> yes or I just show them like I just show them like the heart sign and then they kind of understand why so I've been here for uh, in the U.S. for five years so I've um that's basically how long I've been here okay that's awesome and of all places Kentucky huh <laughs> yes that's the same you know that's the same thing as well say so why in Kentucky like it's so cold there from a tropical you know the season here but yeah I've, I've enjoyed the countryside it's a you know it's a combination um it's a combination of wide lands the horses of course known for it and I just love how it is um because uh, I came from the Philippines it was more in the city base right I was really in the city it was um traffic transportation and everything that you can think of and it was a good transition it's a good transition and kentucky is is amazing is amazing as well that's awesome and i do love kentucky nothing against it it's just way yeah. humid for me <laughs> being a california girl but yeah i've been there many times my husband was actually mm -hmm. stationed right at the border yet. he was at fort campbell mm, okay yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah yes i got to know a little bit you know the area there but yeah, so this is really cool. So we're, before you came to the U.S., did you come already with an idea of your business or was that something that you didn't even, you know, you didn't see coming? Wow. Oh, thank you so much for asking that one because I'm so, I always am, um, what do you call it, telling his story about how I really started with Savvy Chic Design. And the answer is really no. I've never thought that I'll be able to work with awesome entrepreneurs like you, you know, turning and helping them with their visions, with their websites. Um, not at all. I mean, I... It really just first um, first started that, that I was in search of what can I do to be more productive. So in the Philippines, I've been in sales, I've been in the corporate world, doing marketing, traveling for work, you know, and everything. And of course, it is a big shift because you really have to adopt. It's not that. In terms of transition, career-wise, it really takes a little bit because your experience is a bit different from one country to the other. So um, I, I started in the retail here. I think that's the most easiest way to, you know, kind of start off. And I was, re I was in a small town or county before where, I'm at, where I am now. And I was really longing for that sense of community. Like, you know, like-minded individuals that I would like to, to work with, collaborate with. And I got into interest of, you know, the online thing. I've, I've been spending time on Facebook, scrolling, you know, ch checking funny cat videos and everything. I said, I need to be more productive with my time. And I told myself, you know what? Um, I have the experience of sales. I've always been someone that I can always go out. You know, I'm an introvert, extrovert in some sense. But I always like, hey, I can, I can do that one. So I got into the network marketing business because I think that was the one thing that was really a bit easier and so I had that one and I've learned the concept of attraction marketing which then ties in with social media 
And then when I did that one, the one thing that I've really fell in love with was learning how to create like graphics, social media posts. And I started doing that one for my own brand for the, because I started actually selling lipstick, like lipstick that, you know, the, the, you can no smudge and everything. So I said like, Hey, I, I, how can I position myself? Because I was learning about that, like attraction marketing or separate yourself from other, you know, other sellers and everything. I said, okay, let me try that one. And then I started like grabbing from Pinterest, from Google, those quotes, you know, I said like, you know what, I think I can do this one. And I started creating it, creating it. And then the more I network with other people, they then asked me, hey, I kind of like that one because I also was trying to like, hey, did you know that I actually found this new app or this is how you design it? So there was like a really interest in people asking me, Hey, do you do this one? Can you do this for me? Like, can you do my Facebook cover and everything? I said, yeah, yeah, I can. And then I said, like, hmm, this might be something that I can really dive into. And the rest is history. I just started like creating, you know, testing it out. And if you actually, Dolly, if you actually see my very first like cover, I would really say, oh my gosh, it's like an elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Now I'm gonna go look for it. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> No, because, you know, it really shows growth. And I know that it's embarrassing because I feel the same way. Like my first, Mm -hmm. the first time I interviewed somebody, I look Mm -hmm. at it now and I'm like, gosh, I was horrible. (laughs) You know, so so tense and same Mm -hmm. thing with my blog. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's horrible writing. And then I look at now and it, yeah, it makes you cringe, but I think it also makes you happy to see that growth. Yes, yes incredible so do you mean to tell me that you had no graphic design skills or illustrative skills before you started all of this yes the only closest the only closest i think of an experience that i have that i would say that i already knew that i had an eye for i mean um Arts is something that is really close to me. I, I graduated as mass communication. Um, arts, the literature, are some things that I really uh, am gravitate to. The theater, anything that has to do with the arts and music. And I had a job in the Philippines, which is a printing job, and I was one of the sales there. So I'm familiar with verse, with logo, branding, and everything. And that's the closest that I had in terms of the artwork that is now. So yeah, basically, I don't have any. Um, not a graduate of graphics and design. Um, everything is. So thought I always say Dolly I'm a graduate of YouTube Academy you know YouTube University (laughs) me too (laughs) yes and yeah I just started that one and it's really I think one thing is really I mean you always there is a point that I'm not you know I'm not this I'm not that I'm not this we kind of have like the imposter syndrome but then when when you're just I kind of just fell in love really with the process and I think just the like what you mentioned we're both like open to learning and just really learning and really diving it and beyond that it's really implementing what we learn it's kind of makes me the confidence that I have to show up that I can do that what you know I can do that so it's something as well that I think has really taught me. I think it gave me more, um, more eagerness to learn because I didn't have that background right away, you know? Wow. That's, that's so amazing. So if anybody watching this is thinking, oh my gosh, I just don't have the skill. Well, yeah, you don't have to go to traditional schooling to learn just about mm-hmm. anything. I love yeah. it. Um, so, okay. So as you were, you know, you move over to the U S and you're in Kentucky. And so what do you say to your husband or your family members? Like, Hey, I'm going to start up this, you know, because I've been doing it for friends and they want to pay me. So what did they say about that? Yeah. I mean, they, uh, the very first thing, the very first thing during the f- first few months, few years, I've been doing this one close to two years, three years already by next year. Um, people didn't really understand what is it that I'm doing because I was social media was my number one platform of showing up um, because I didn't have that network here, especially being, you know, uh, from a different country, different nationality. So local base, I didn't have that one local network. I didn't have that one. So I had to double time and showing up in social media. And one of the best way I do that is actually through um, Facebook live. So I did consistent Facebook Live every day. I joined community of doing that. So I'm um, going back to your question is actually at first, they, didn't, they did not understand what I am doing. 
-hmm. So I was working full time. I was doing this after work. And you know how it is when tradition, you know, you, um, you go to bed early, you know, there is a certain routine when you're not doing a business. And then um, the income that you generate in the very first set is it's not there. I mean, you know, it's, it's the process, right? You, you network, you, you, your price is a bit lower than where we are at now. So there is a bit of I don't understand what you're doing, but there's a support. I think that's it. It's just a different level of um, understanding as well. So you'll just wonder, like, I saw your video. Um, do you actually earn from it? Or what is it actually <laughs> you do? You kind of have those like, side comments. And then, um, yeah, I think those are the first things that I have really um, gone through the very first stages. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can so relate to that because I, people still ask me that right now. They're like, so yeah. <laughs> They're like, so are you making, do you get paid? <laughs> yeah. Are the schools paying you? <laughs> or like, do you have clients? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so tell me a little bit about the story of, you know, the name of your company. You know, I, I've always been passionate about branding and everything. That's one of the things that I really help with my client as well. So when I very first started, I mentioned about the network marketing. Savvy was really a word that it's, I'm really drawn. I'm really just drawn, just savvy, savvy with anything. And I think it just correlate now looking back. I think I kind of correlate on how I live my life. Um, in terms of not really, maybe not an expert. I always call myself um, street smart, uh, smart, uh, street smart as type of a person. Um, you know, um, I'm. Ne it's not. You know, if we have to acclaim it like educational in terms of grade or everything, I'm always an average, but yet I excel. Kind of of that sense, or kind of like figuring things out. And that word has really just drawn to me, savvy. And then chic, and the other one. Um, my personality is fun, you know, not like the chic, like a sh Chanel kind of, just kind of like a, like a feminine fun and everything. And those two kind of really just drawn to me, like the savviness of just figuring things out because that's how I run my business. Cause I'm um, like, as not as mentioned, going back to not really having that educational background when it comes to design with the techie stuff and website, I need to be savvy enough to really figure things out, to tie in all the technicalities, you know, research, really um, trial and error with websites, with designs. So that's one of the key things. I was just really drawn with the word savvy. I had to Google what's the meaning. Oh, okay. All right. I like this one. I like the, the meaning of this one and the chic um, and then just with design. The design was one thing that I kind of like played around. Did I want to be creative? Did I want to be studio? Did I want to? And then I kind of just like, you know what? I'm just going to go design. And then I kind of just tie it up, you know, designing, designing the life for my clients, designing the vision that they have, that they would like for their business. So that's somehow how Savvy Chic Design um, came about. And actually a funny thing is that all my, like the lipstick, like the lipstick, I had the savvy beauty i think something i have the savvy craft because i went into the network marketing that has with craft like the frame crafts as well so so like oh, almost everything that i've like started this has the savvy in it and i said i think this is this is something that is just really close to me so that's how the name is it was a sign that word just was calling you <laughs> yes yes i was like oh, okay i'll stick with this one <laughs> So tell me, do you remember your very first client, your very first paying client? Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, I remember, um, shout out to BB Prieto, to Pam um, Walrod, to Christine, and to Lori Hilista. These are the four people who really first, really, Joanna, I want you to... It, because at first, what I was doing is actually teaching people one-on-one -on, -one on how to do their Canva. Um, designs. That's how I did it. I designed it for them. And then it was like a one on one session. Okay, let me do this one. And these are really the first people who really believe in what, um, what I was doing. And it just gave me that trust. And until now, I mean, you know, we still communicate and everything. Some has um, done their own um, path already with what they want to achieve. But these are really like the four people on top of my mind. I would always say like, these are the people who really believe in me and really hired me. And the first amount, maybe around $39, $50. Oh, it started wow. that. Yeah, it started that. And then eventually, you know, you kind of grow, you work on it. And it's just the rest is just like, oh, okay, this is so yeah. fun. 
that is so nice. I can uh, totally understand how you seeing your eyes gleam when you <laughs> thought of the, that first person. <laughs> it's so nice to see because I think we all have those moments. So do you have, uh, do you have any tips for people who are looking for a web designer? Because I know that you're pretty particular yourself with who you want to work with. And I think mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't even think about that. A lot of people think, okay, well, I want this person. What do I want them to be like? But you have your, your picks and, you know, uh -huh. as well. So can you give us some tips for both? You know, if you're uh -huh. starting off as a designer, any tips on how they should choose their customers and vice versa? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, for me, there was a time where in, when we are really starting, this is going to be, this is going to be a reality that you kind of want to bring in all that you can bring in because you know, you're kind of particular, Hey, the income is coming in and everything. And you will actually then identify, um, identify who are the people that you want to work with. I had my, I have experiences of, you know, um, it's not that I don't want to work with them. It's just that maybe just unfortunate transaction or, you know, process. And especially when you're starting off, there's a lot of trial and error. And through that, um, you'll really hone and really polish more of your workflow. Um, so if you're a designer, if you're someone who's trying to really get into the business, um, showing up is one of the key things that have really helped me to be more consistent um, because it just... I think it just shows to my client that, um, you know, if you show up, you're kind of, hey, this is someone who's going to show up for me or you're going to help me out, right? Despite being busy or crazy and everything. And um, just really knowing your worth. Um, I know sometimes we question our worth, right? Like, you know, and and saying no is not really bad. Getting no and saying no are actually words that are not really are not bad. These are actually powerful words because it either help. It really helps you. It really helps you kind of figure out like, hey, um, and I and one of the key things as well is that being honest and that you know what I think that won't work for me. I think I'm not the right fit. That's why every time I network um Dolly on Facebook group, I always say, hey, if you're open, let's discuss because I want to make sure that I am the right fit. Because it will be a disservice for my clients or for those who will hire me if I am not the right fit for them. Mm -hmm. And I think the more I got that, hey, I need to be, it's not just the money, you know, for me, it, it might be some people, oh, just cliche or something. But I think I'm just in that stage we're in. Um, I just had to realize that I need to be of service to the person who I'm going to build a website for. You know, to make sure that that's why we went through when we had our our um our Zoom call, right? We had the discussion, like what is it you want, the questions that you ask your clients, what is it their what is it also that they want short term and long term helps you gauge as well how you can really help them reach the point A to point Z. I think that's that's one thing. I hope I kinda just make sense as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And you know what? I really love that you do that, that you ask me a lot of questions. So I'm going to use my uh, experience as an example for uh, listeners or watchers. So um, I like that you asked a series of questions. And I remember you saying like, hey, this questionnaire is very long, but it's going to be very helpful. And when I saw it, I thought, wow, she wasn't not kidding. It is long. <laughs> but what you did there was more than just gather information for yourself. I, you really made me think hard about what I truly wanted. And by the end of it, I think I took a, like maybe an hour and a half, maybe because I was overthink things. But by the end of it, I saw a clear picture or a clearer picture of what I wanted my website to look like and feel. And I like that you had those type of questions. Well, what do you want it to look like? What do you want it to feel? What do you want to convey? What words would you describe, uh, you know, thinking about what you want out of a website or your brand? One of the key things that I really believe in is that um, designing, it's a transference of a vision. You know, it's your vision giving to me. So I need to really absorb it. That's why sometimes when people ask me, what is your time frame? Or what is your, I mean, I have a time frame, but it, sometimes I have to say, I need to get a little bit, I need to step back for me to see the, you know, like to really mm -hmm. absorb it, to, you know, intuitively design it. Because sometimes like, oh, I'm not, you know, because if, if it's not, if I'm not like, hey, I'm sold with what is created, 
I know that the client won't also be sold because I want to make sure that um, the, the communication, the written form, the expectation is really there and it makes it more better that way too. And I, I thank you for the feedback um, because sometimes as well, like especially for those designers, there will really be clients who are still unclear of what they have. They have it in their mind. And we, I, I'm a visual person. We, our task as a designer is to really visualize it. And when they see it, when they read it, when they see it, they said, ah, okay, that's what I want. No, they didn't, I didn't want that one. I thought I liked that one. So that's where we kind of like, drop you know kind of like puzzle okay this works this doesn't work this lives it there and then kind of just like transform it into what we have launched as well today just like your website yeah uh, you know one thing another thing because there were many things that impressed me about working with you but the other one that really stuck out was your ability to capture my vision and mm -hmm. i think that you captured it even better than what how i had seen it in my my in my mind um uh particularly like when uh the example of the logo <laughs> no, that second logo <laughs> that it's like i knew how i wanted it but i could not quite describe uh -huh. it to you and you just knew how to pull that question or those questions out of me and you knew how to give me visuals so that i could get closer to that goal that we had and we found it so yes yeah, that was that was very impressive. So uh, that's one thing I would tell people like, hey, you've got to find that person that knows how to pull that out of people because we we all we have our ideas, you know, mm -hmm. what we want. And I think uh, the other factor there was the fact that your style is something that I truly I love, like the, mm -hmm. the clean, chic nice feminine soft and i thought i remember thinking gosh i want that too but i also want you know my own twist yes yeah. nice that you're able to provide a little bit of your style with a little bit of mine and mm -hmm. people wouldn't know that part of something in there is probably yours it was just that you merged them so nicely because that's what i asked for because i remember telling yeah. you well i really like that soft clean look that you have but I also want it to be like this because of my my audience, you know? Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, and that's the amazing thing of really working with clients on how I enjoy it. Because, I mean, I've worked with men and women. You know, I know uh, particularly if you go to my website, it's really going to be more feminine. But I have a lot of men that I work with. And just like what you said, it's really, it's, it's, re there are designers who really focus on the way they design. But I think when I really allow, just have that deeper understanding, that's why the questionings are there, the back and forth questions sometimes, I think it's there. So, um, let me just hear it from you again. Or, you know, kind of like make sure I kind of understand it or let's do a zoom call again because I want to make sure I visualize it so yeah and, and, it, and it's it's a and I really in, I think I really enjoy the process sometimes it can be exhausting especially for those of you who would like to go into the design business like any other thing you know it can be exhausting because there's a transference of you know energy of emotion and then you're gonna you know filter it out or flash it out as a visual creation but when you really see it and when because for me Dolly design gives confidence to my clients you know it's that it's that confidence of like oh my gosh it's it's really what i envision it, now i can show up in a way that i had the expertise i have the skills i'm not an amateur i know what i'm talking about now i have that here's here's my portfolio right or oh here's my, my you're <laughs> so right on it because that's how i feel right now right now i feel like i got dressed up or that my business got dressed up to go on the red carpet at the grammys that's what my business is doing right now <laughs> yes yes yeah. well i'm so glad because yeah and then after that of course i always tell as well now the work you know now the work of making sure you know you promote your website you promote you show up you keep you know, you create that, um, that the consistency of the different uh, touch point um, on the client side. So on the client now, as an advice as well, you kind of asked me too, is that how can somebody who's hiring a web designer, you know, because I always say, because, you know, some people say, how can my website convert and everything? Because I even have my own website. It takes still a work. I mean, a website is not just something that will work once it's launched. It still has the after work for it. You know, making sure that you filter people out 
to your website. You tell them you have a website. You know, you kind of like really use your website as the platform to book a call with you, to know your packages, to really know that you have something there, you know, that certain um, exposure as well after you have your website. Yeah, definitely. So you've given us some tips for the web designer and how to work with people. Now, what advice would you give potential customers who want to work with you? Like, what would they want? What would you want them to know about working? Um, yeah, I mean, whether it's me or whether it's someone else, um, I always believe that you know, um, talk to that person, have the conversation. I think if you can, um, if you can have that certain conversation right away. I think that would be the best, the best way of knowing that designer as well. Um, you know, making sure how they design things. I think it, it kind of, it's a bit different because, but mostly what I really say, uh, what, what based on my client, they say like, Hey, I, I've seen you. I've actually just watched you, you know, from the time that I've seen you, where it is, what are social media, your posts, your Facebook and everything. And then we had a talk. I think you said the same thing. It's just that, that, that energy as well of, you know, the transference of energy, how you connect, um, I think is the best thing intuitively your, your intuition and how you can work with it's cause it's, um, hiring a designer or hiring anyone is a trust basis. Um, you just have to really make sure you have your certain list of, um, like, for example, on the side, like, how do you work? What are your, like, I think your basic schedule, what is your timeline? Can you do this one? I also want to say as a client as well, like map what you want in terms of what you, what you want to have in your website so that you can ask your designer. Okay. I actually, um, it might not be clear right away. It might not even be like, I don't even know that one that I needed that one, right? Because eventually that will be advice to you. But you want maybe your homepage. In your homepage, you maybe want someone to just book a call with you that can see your calendar or can just sync your email or, um, you know, get paid, of course. <laughs> you know, make sure it integrates with your payment gateway. Whatever you kind of think you want, write it down and ask it just ask it. Um, they may not answer you the right question, but it kind of just gives you that certain, okay, all right. You know, um, some of the things that they can always consider Yeah, Ask question. Um, also like how they work, what are their process, um, that after support, like after our support, like for example, like, um, maybe, you know, cause I think we work even 12 midnight or something like that. It really depends, you know, <laughs> You know, it always depends. But yeah, I mean, those are possibilities. Like, hey, um, tech questions. How can I reach you? How can, you know, do you have a certain time frame that you just work? Because some designers have that one. They're just like nine to five. After that, you will be on the next day, right? It really depends. So those type of questions, because, because do remember, though, that the tech side, once you hire somebody, the technical side, they might be doing something differently on what you regularly will be doing it. So you kind of want to make sure that there is a communication because I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs get frustrated with either web developers or web designers because, um, because they, there is a gap. There is a gap of understanding how was this done in order for me to understand, you know, you kind of want to make sure that you kind of, have that one too. And I think my advice as well to uh, fellow designers as well is that um, you want to empower your client because even though they know how to do it, if they don't have time and they don't have the energy, they may have to do it. They'll still go back to you to do it because it's your expertise. I just had a client a while ago who said like, you know what? I can do it, but my energy is not something that I'm going to profit from, you know, or kind of that one. So the abundance mindset, um, I always believe in empowering my clients of knowing the things that goes behind the scenes so that they can do it themselves as well. Yeah. Ooh, those are so many good pieces of advice. I love it. And uh, I think they're going to be very helpful because luckily I did some research before I came to you. And even when I uh, reached out to you, I was afraid that I wasn't asking the right questions, but you did such a great job. Just you knew what to ask. So that was very helpful for me. Yeah. So do you have um, any uh, upcoming events with your business that people shouldn't be aware of? Yes. Okay. So, um, 
it's gonna it's like i'm i'm telling this one to the universe so that everything can happen already but anyway so um one of the key things of course that i do as a service is going to be the branding and web design anything that has to do with graphics is one thing that i really support entrepreneurs especially for those who are knowledge based you know just like you you have your courses you have your services um whether it's wordpress or kajabi those are the two platforms that i have but um, I am always passionate uh, in empowering um, other entrepreneurs to really understand as well the design as well, do it themselves. Um, and that's one thing because it has really helped me to be that, w to be that way as well. So um, currently, I actually have some templates that I have, but I've decided to make it more independently. So it's going to be still savvy. So the savvy template shop will soon Ooh. be coming. Hopefully, it's going to be towards the third quarter or the fourth quarter. It will be covering more on um, template shops that has to do with Canva, so anything like, for example, um, templates with PDF, opt-in, sales price list that you can edit yourself. And I am also working really hard <laughs> that I can also launch the website template for WordPress and also Kajabi, um, because I've seen like um, you know just making sure that um, for those people who still would like to have the eye for design, but they can't really hire full on. Um, so that's one thing. So the Savvy Template Shop is already there, just coming. Hopefully it will really be launching soon. So do check that one out. So we do have um, Savvy Chic Design. We have the Savvy Template Shop. And just to share still, we're actually also going to have the Savvy, uh, Savvy Design Academy. That's more on the courses that I have because um, I also teach. I do a lot of teach um, free teaching right now. So those are actually the three things that I have under Savvy Chic Design. Wow. I didn't know about your teaching academy. Oh my gosh. I'm both. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I currently just have, um, I, I currently have the free mood board class with Canva. And then I actually had one class that has to do with, um, let me see if you can still hear me. Okay, there we go. I actually had a one class that I did for 30 days visual content, how to plan out a whole 30 days um, content that you can just, so for those of you who follow me on Instagram, all the daily posts has been done on one, one time per month. And then I schedule it to be posted every day for the next 30 days. Oh my gosh, that is to my make it more. <laughs> I was actually make it on that earlier today. <laughs> yeah, because it can be overwhelming, especially if you're a busy entrepreneur and then you still would like to show up. I mean, repurposing is the key for me and just planning as well, especially the visual content, the posts and everything. So yeah, so hopefully I can transfer that one. So do check that one out again. Savvy Chic Design for done for you if you want that one. Um, Savvy Template Shop is coming soon. And also the Savvy Design Academy. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm excited about the templates too. That's so, that's amazing. I don't know how you find the time to do all of this. I, I know, I think no sleep. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Because I'm surprised you have uh, sent me messages. And I look at the time and it's kind of late here. But at your time, it's like, whoa, <laughs> I see up. She's still working. <laughs> but I, I get it. Because sometimes, you know, that's what we do. And that's how we roll. That's how we yeah. grab onto that momentum or that, mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, what is that called? Adrenaline. And yes. Just oh, go for it. <laughs> Yeah, the creative mind sometimes 1 a.m. and my husband said, what time is it? Um, it's almost 1. Okay, I'll go to sleep now. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, um, yeah, I think when you have really a mission to empower, uh, to empower your clients when it comes to design, I think we, we keep up and running. Of course, in the long run, our goal is to really have more time that we can, but while we're doing at it, so let's just keep on going. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, for sharing your story, for allowing me to learn more about you. I feel even more connected now and, yes. and you'll be hearing more from me. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. We have more project to come and I'm so excited because, um, one thing I also really was, I just love working with you is number one, of course, what we have created, the mission behind your business. Um, I think that's also one thing that why I really just love transforming the vision into the visuals because 
um, th- who you serve as well with your platform, with the anti-bullying, you know, with the courses that you have, with um, the books, the, the speaking um, engagement that you have. It's really empowering other people because we all need to stop bullying. I mean, it is a one mission that you have really influenced me. And I'm so proud of to be part of that brand to really, you know, showcase it more and spread it more to other people. So make sure, guys, to check out Dolly, okay? We all <laughs> need to stop bullying, you know, the bullies. <laughs> in the world i appreciate that and actually i'm glad you uh, mentioned a little bit of that of that because it felt like you cared just as much as i care so that i know that you mean every word of that because i absolutely felt it throughout the entire time so thank you so much thank you thank you and welcome as well and thank you for letting me part of the journey it's it's amazing and i'm so excited to go through and move through and with everything that you will be creating thank you well, there you have it, folks. Another inspiring story, this time by Miss Joanna Shero. She's phenomenal, isn't she? So I know that I'm a little bit biased, but I really, really think that if you met her in person or maybe virtually, you'd definitely fall in love with her the way that I have. She shared with us how she got started, you know, immigrating from the Philippines just five years ago and now thriving in her business. I hope that you were able to catch some of those golden nuggets that she provided us. So remember, if you are looking for a web designer, she provided some tips. She suggested thoroughly thinking about what you want out of not just your vision, but what you want your relationship to be with the designer so that you can jive well. She suggests, you know, starting small and just giving it your all and to look for ways to educate yourself. There is nothing stopping you today. With access to the online world, you can learn pretty much anything. But don't forget that Joanna is also a teacher. She doesn't just design beautiful websites. You can check out what she offers. Go to SavvyChicDesign.com to find out about how you can enroll in the Savvy Design Academy or if you just want to buy some of her amazing templates. If you like this video, please click like. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can be alerted every time I post a new video. And if you want more information, more good stories, more words of wisdom and resources and insider updates, then come on over to dalitalks.com. Enjoy the experience that Joanna has created for you and subscribe to my newsletter. The biggest compliment that you can give me is by letting me know what you think about this episode and, of course, subscribing. Thank you once again for being here, and I'll see you next Wednesday for another episode.